Heavy metals and their detoxification play a huge role in the holistic health field. Entire books have been written on the subject, and if you clicked on this video, chances are you want to get rid of your toxic metal load. So let's talk about how to do that correctly, and also about things most people should avoid, like chelation therapy. Let's get started. First things first, what even are heavy slash toxic metals? They describe a group of very dense metals with no nutritional value. These metals typically include lead, mercury, cadmium, and arsenic. But certain nutritional metals, like copper and iron, can also become toxic when in excess and in biounavailable form. Other lighter metals, like aluminum, can also be toxic. The negative impact of toxic metals on human health is very diverse and will come in many symptoms, from neurological disorders to cardiovascular diseases or hormonal problems and developmental impairments, especially in children. One important disclaimer, in this video I will talk about mostly chronic low-dose exposure to heavy metals, so an accumulation that happens over years and years and gradually. This is very different from acute high-dose exposure, for example from a work accident. In that case you obviously want to go to the hospital. With that said, let's start by talking about how to correctly test for toxic metals. This is actually more complicated than many people realize. Most doctors use standard blood tests, but the problem with blood tests is that toxic metals aren't stored in the blood. In fact, when you're exposed to them and they land in your bloodstream, your body will very quickly try to get rid of them. Remember that the blood is the transportation highway of the body, with the potential to reach almost every cell in it. Keeping toxins in the blood for too long would be harmful, so your body will either send them to the kidney and liver, we will talk about those in a second, or if not all of the heavy metals can be processed by your kidney and liver, it will deposit them in your tissue, often in deep tissue that isn't involved in critical body processes, for example, connective tissue. So blood tests are really a bad measure of your total toxic metal load. It really only shows what's currently circulating, for example, if you've been recently exposed to some type of toxic metal. Even tissue tests, like hair analysis, don't give you the full picture. They really only show what your body has excreted in the last two to three months through the hair. Ironically, normal levels of toxic metals on a hair analysis are often better than very low levels. And the reason for that is that very low levels are indicative of a poor eliminator pattern. This is a pattern that people show when their body cannot easily eliminate a toxic metal. So they never get released from the tissue and therefore never show up in your hair. What you have to realize is that basically everyone nowadays has some form of heavy metal toxicity. They're simply too persistent in our environment. But you will really only see what your total metal load is once you start eliminating them correctly. Now, what about challenge tests? These are done by first administrating a drug that binds to and removes toxic metals. You then collect a urine sample and see what is found in that sample and what is coming out of the body. Based on the results, it is then inferred what metals your body has accumulated. These tests have some validity, but they can backfire for very sensitive people. They basically carry the same risks as normal chelation therapy because the same drug is used. We will talk about chelation therapy in a second. First, here's a list of the most common environmental sources of heavy metals. Mercury can come from mercury tooth fillings or eating too much large fish, such as tuna. Cadmium can come from tobacco or marijuana. Lead used to be in gasoline and paint until around the 1970s, but has now been removed. But some old homes still have lead pipes. Arsenic is found in fairly high doses in rice and aluminum can come from deodorants, food cans, cookware, or aluminum foil. Of course, there are many other sources as well. These are just some that you probably should be aware of. And like I said before, certain nutritional metals like iron and copper can also become toxic when in excess and in biounavailable form. But I talk about those in different videos. Great, let's now talk about how to correctly eliminate these toxic metals. That's what you're interested in, right? Our body has natural detoxification pathways that should do the heavy lifting here. The most important players here are your kidneys and your liver. Ideally, they should pick up the toxic metals and filter them out of the blood as fast as possible. 
The problem is that both organs often don't work at optimal capacity in many people due to nutritional deficiencies, health problems, or other environmental insults. That is why two people with the same exposure to toxic metals can have completely different health outcomes. You simply cannot predict how someone reacts to metal accumulation and what specific symptoms they will get. For example, people with chronic health issues like chronic fatigue syndrome or a really bad immune system are usually poor eliminators, and they need to do more than the average person to decrease their exposure to heavy metals and also to improve their elimination. There are different approaches that you can take here. The three that I want to talk about in this video are chelation therapy, heavy metal binders, and mineral balancing. Chelation therapy is the most common approach. Here you ingest a substance, a chelator, which comes from the Greek word for claw, which binds to the metal and helps the body eliminate it. While there are natural chelators such as zeolite or chlorella, which we will talk about next, most people when they refer to chelation therapy mean synthetic chelators such as EDTA, DMPS or DMSA. These are sulfur-based synthetic amino acids that were made especially for the purpose of pulling out certain heavy metals from the body. If you go to your doctor and are diagnosed with heavy metal toxicity, this is what they will give you, usually in IV form, but they are also available in oral form. Small doses of oral chelators every couple of hours is what the Cutler protocol recommends, which is one of the most famous metal detox protocols out there. The problem with both IV and oral chelation is that all chelators, but synthetic more so than natural ones, also remove some of your essential minerals. So even though each chelator is set to target a specific metal, they act somewhat randomly and always also pull out some of your essential minerals as well. This is a serious problem for two reasons. First, many people are already extremely deficient in essential minerals, such as magnesium, zinc, chromium, selenium, and others. So if they lose even more of them, their symptoms will get worse. And second, the act of chelation unbalances your body chemistry. Your doctor will usually tell you that they replenish the vital minerals either with a supplement or by adding them to the chelation IV. But in my experience, the net result is still often negative. I've simply heard of too many people where chelation therapy either didn't work or even made things worse to recommend it to people. Redistribution can also be a problem. So when you stir up the toxic metal with the chelator, but your kidney and liver aren't able to eliminate it fast enough, so it gets redistributed in other tissue. Really, the only time I would recommend chelation therapy is when you were exposed to a very high acute dose of a toxic metal that needs to come out immediately. In that case, you obviously need to go to the hospital and act quickly. Next, let's talk about binders. Toxin binders are specific compounds that bind to heavy metals and other toxins as well to help remove them. This would be a form of natural chelation and they're usually taken in supplement or tincture form and different binders can attach to different toxins. So online you will find a lot of resources on which binders are best for which toxin or metal. Binders are supposed to guide the toxic metals safely out of your body, usually through the bile that your liver releases. Since bound toxins are also less reactive than unbound ones, they will also reduce oxidative stress and inflammation caused by the elimination process. The most common binders you will find online are chlorella, charcoal, zeolite, humic and fulvic acids, and pectin. Certain binders like MCP or micronized chlorella don't just work in the GI tract, but can also be absorbed into the bloodstream due to their small particle size, which means they can work in other body tissue as well. While natural binders are definitely more gentle than IV chelation therapy, they're still controversial. Some practitioners swear by them, while others say that they also remove vital minerals, and if your detox pathways don't work right, then they will also only stir up the toxic metal and don't really do anything. If you decide to use chelators, definitely buy from a reputable brand and have them lab test their stuff. Since they're so attracted to toxic metals, they can come with them if they were produced in a contaminated environment. Okay, now that we talked about chelation therapy and binders, let's talk about my favorite method of removing heavy metals. It is mineral balancing. 
I talk about it in many of my videos, and most people with chronic health problems have undiagnosed mineral deficiencies and imbalances. Once you fix those, many symptoms disappear by themselves. This is explained in much more detail in a different video, and I also have a step-by-step -step mineral balancing guide in my program. Mineral balancing works very well for gentle heavy metal detox because it is the only approach that understands something called the preferred mineral concept. The scientific name of this concept is ionic mimicry. The idea is that when preferred minerals are deficient in someone, often their body can use toxic metals in metalloenzymes, so enzymes that require a metal for their activity and continue to function. But of course, the level of functioning is not as good as when the preferred mineral is present in the enzyme binding site. For example, an enzyme that would require zinc could use cadmium instead when zinc is deficient, but it would only function at maybe 50 or even 10%. This ensures survival and keeps you functioning, but obviously it doesn't keep you in ideal health. So even though toxic metals are technically defined as metals that serve no nutritional function in the body, in cases of nutrient deficiencies, they are somewhat helpful and better than nothing. If you now force these toxic metals out with chelation therapy, you are taking away the last metal the metalloenzyme could work with, making the person feel even worse. The concept of preferred minerals also explains why people with nutrient deficiencies accumulate more toxic metals than others. For example, a calcium deficiency will lead to more lead accumulation because lead can be incorporated into the bones. A zinc deficiency will lead to more cadmium accumulation because it can be used in zinc-dependent enzymes, like I just said. And a magnesium deficiency will lead to more aluminum accumulation since they're both light metals. What that means is that the best way to get rid of toxic metals is one, to strengthen your elimination organs. This is always part of any holistic health program. And two, to fix the nutrient deficiencies that made your body hold on to the toxic metals in the first place. In that sense, heavy metal detox is the natural result of improving your biochemistry and will be a natural byproduct of mineral balancing. Of course, I still want to give you a short list of the most important nutrients besides those needed to fix your deficiencies. They include selenium. That's because selenium helps eliminate all toxic metals. And many of us are low in it, especially if we live in an environment with low selenium in the soil. Two, sulfur. Sulfur is extremely important for liver function, and quality sulfur compounds are found in onions, garlic, and cruciferous vegetables, or in sulfur-containing amino acids, which would be methionine, cysteine, and taurine. Taurine helps with bile production, and cysteine is needed to synthesize glutathione, a very powerful antioxidant and detoxification compound. Lastly, you have zinc. Zinc itself blocks heavy metals and their toxic effects, and another benefit of it is that together with cysteine, it increases metallothionine production, which is a protein that the body makes to attach to heavy metals and eliminate them. People with low metallothionine levels accumulate more and more toxic metals over time. Great, I hope this video gave you a good understanding of what proper heavy metal detox looks like and why I'm not a fan of drastic approaches like chelation therapy. The most important mistake people make is to overly focus on getting all of the toxic metals out of their body without replacing them with the preferred minerals that the body needs to function properly. I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.